This morning, for the next few minutes, I just want to entertain the thought, compelling love, ambassadors of reconciliation. Compelling love, ambassadors of reconciliation. I am learning that the love of Christ is the most important thing that there is. There is nothing greater than the love of God. I have for far too long and for far too many days allowed other things to compel me. But I am realizing that is all a waste of energy until you come to the place of compelling love. I want to be compelled by the love of God. In everything I say and do, in my rising up and my laying down and going to workplace and coming home, in the shopping experience, I want the compelling love of God. I want to be an ambassador of reconciliation. This morning I am on assignment and the assignment that is assigned to me is to reconcile you to your expectation of what God has declared. Don't let your expectation be what your circumstances have dictated to you. Don't let your expectation be what your emotions have told you. Don't let your expectation be that of the past experiences. But let your expectation be compelled by the loving hand of the loving God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Word, shall we? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. It declares it this way. This is one of my favorite verses. I love this verse. It's a great verse. For the love of Christ compels us. Say, love compels us. Man, when you walk under the power of love, you are walking in something that the enemy cannot touch. Hallelujah. You want to walk in a way away from the enemy? Let it be from the compelling love of God. Hallelujah. For the love of Christ compels us. See, it didn't say that it could or it might or it should. Can I tell you, if you're a born-again believer, if you've ever surrendered your life to Jesus, there's something on the inside, and it's time for you to let it arise and let the compelling love of Christ move you. And there's one reason that we can allow compelling love to move us. And it's the second part of this verse. Because we have made a judgment. Say, we've made a judgment today. Yes. I would that you would make this judgment. And make it above all other judgments. Because if you make this judgment, it will put other things in divine order. What you need is divine order in your life. Because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. See, we have heard this verse, possibly even read this verse, but can I tell you it is time to live this verse? Can I tell you that it's time for us to make a judgment? And what this is talking about, that if one died, how many of you know it's talking about Jesus, that if one died? Can I tell you, the love of Christ can compel you if you make the judgment that the reason I'm going to do this is because Jesus died for all. Hallelujah. It changes the course. It changes the action. And sometimes it'll even change the reaction. And sometimes it'll stop the reaction and make you be proactive because you have considered and made the judgment that there has been one that has died for all. Can I tell you, when you begin to see your circumstances that surround you from the perspective that Jesus died for all, it changes the way from being reacting to proacting the love of God. Compelled by the love of God. Say compelled by the love of God. Oh, I dare you. I dare you to lay hold of this word this morning because we judge thus that if one died, and certainly he did, 
then all died. Can I tell you, we've seen people in the wrong perspective sometimes. Can I tell you, it's time for us to see men and women around us as candidates of the love of the cross. It's time to see the saint as a candidate for the love of the cross. It's time to see the sinner as a candidate for the love of the cross. It's time to see the wicked ones that our hearts even grown hard to as a candidate for the love of the cross. Because we judge thus, if Jesus died for all, then all died. And if they have died, they have potential for resurrection life. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, as a believer, you have resurrection life. And we're about to hit a verse that we have talked about for the last several years an awful lot around here. But can I tell you, I want to put that verse in the context of the God perspective. It's time for us to live in the God perspective. And when you live in the God perspective, the enemy cannot touch you. Hallelujah. Say, the enemy can't touch me. You know why? Jesus has already made a public spectacle of him. Triumphing over him. Say the enemy's triumphed over. Yes, he is. It's time to walk in compelling love. Next verse. Verse 15. Can we read it together? And he died for all. Say Jesus died for all. He sure did. That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. I've got a new reason for living today. Because he died for me, I'm going to live for him. Hallelujah. We made an exchange. He took my sin. I took his righteousness. He took my doom and destruction, and he gave me his purpose. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, saint of God, you are full of purpose. I don't care what the enemy has spoken to you. It's time for purpose to arise. He died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves. It's time to give up the self-seeking, and it's time to surrender, to live for him who rose again. Can I tell you, Jesus is the one. This morning I give you Jesus. He is the one and there is no other one. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, I want to bring motive back to your life. I want to bring hope back to your life. I want to bring a dream back to your life. But it only comes when you judge that Jesus, there is one who has died for all. Therefore, we are no longer going to live for ourselves, but we're going to live for him who died and rose again. You want the most optimal outcome of your life? You want your life to be successful? Surrender to living for him for the rest of your life. Not my way, Lord. Your way. I surrender to holy dictates. I deny the lies of the enemy. I will exalt the word above what I feel. I will exalt the word above what I, what I think. I will exalt the word above the circumstance itself. Because God is greater than all. How many of you know the word has declared, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Say, I've got something on the inside. Brings me out victory for the outside. Can I tell you, you've been looking for victory in the wrong place. It's on the inside. Hallelujah. Next verse. There's a new way to perceive things. There's a new way to live. There's a new perspective to live in. Therefore, say therefore. therefore. You understand the therefore is there because we read verses 14 and 15. Therefore, because we judged that there was one who died and rose again. Therefore, because of that, say from now on, there's going to be a new way of thinking. Hallelujah. From now on, I'm going to get the God perspective before I take my next step. Hallelujah. How many have tired of self-steps and then understand that you stepped into it? And it was never what God called you to. Therefore, from now on, say from now on, we will regard no one according to the flesh. Can I tell you?
if you will learn to regard people no longer according to the flesh, but because Christ died and rose again, they are a candidate for the grace of God. It changes the way you live. If you see your husband is a candidate for the grace of God, it changes the way you treat him. If you see your wife as a candidate for the grace of God, it changes the way that you treat her. If you see your neighbor as a candidate for the grace of God, I know, see, you're, you, you see your neighbor sometimes, they've really, they've, they've, they have annoyed you. Can I tell you? It's time to get a new view. It's time for compelling love to rise up. It's time for compelling love to change the lives of men and women. Compelling love that instead of allowing the enemy to affect your emotions so that you're annoyed by the neighbor, it's time for you to push back. Say push back. And the way I'm going to push back is I'm not going to regard anyone according to a worldly point of view anymore. I want to see them how God sees them. And the only way that I'm going to see my neighbor as God sees them is I take the God perspective from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. See, some people, they've just read over that verse saying, I don't know what that means. That means nothing to me. That just sounds foreign. Can I tell you, that's why it's not working in your life. It's only the truth that you know that's going to set you free. Can I tell you, we know Christ and then we try to operate in the flesh and so we think it's going to be Christ plus things I do. But can I tell you, that is not how it works. It's Christ and then your actions are compelled by love. You try to fix this thing in your flesh, you know you've only made it worse, right? But can I tell you, now you have come to Christ. And now you make a decision. I'm not, not going to know Christ that way. I know that he died for all. Therefore, I'm going to look at all different than I've ever looked at him before. I'm not going to look at him after the flesh. I'm going to look at him after the Spirit of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Compelled by love. Can I tell you? This is life-giving. This is liberating. You want liberated? Start living your life compelled by love. And if you realize things you're doing are not compelled by love, then stop. Yeah. That, is that just way too simple? No. It's the Word. Lord, let me get compelled by God. No longer, no longer compelled by the flesh, but compelled by the Spirit of God. Because there's something on the inside now that has power over my emotions. There's something on the inside now that has power over my intellect. There's something on the inside now. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. I surrender the hope. Anybody else want to surrender to the hope? See, Hope not surrendered to does you no good. But hope surrendered to changes the way you live. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Verse 17. Now the familiar verse. Can you read it with me? I know y'all know this verse. We've been saying it far too long. Probably most of you, if we took it off the screen, you could probably quote it. Let's read it together, shall we? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ. Say anyone. anyone. Anyone is in Christ. There's the qualification. If anyone is in Christ. Here's the word. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Can I tell you? you got a new man you can start living from. Can I tell you, you don't have to live from your emotions. You can train your emotions to come in line with the Word of God. And you ain't going to be happy until you do. Living according to your emotions has not given you victory. Can I tell you, the definition of insanity is to expect a different result from doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Can I tell you, if you are compelled by love, you begin to live out of this new man. I realized at 4 o'clock this morning, this, I was praying. And can I tell you, I've just about had it with the devil. I'm through. 
I'm telling you, I've been hit by him in so many ways. I've been hit, and I've seen the ministry team hit, and I've seen the people of God in this church hit, and I've had enough. And what I have decided is that I need to leave my expectation of the flesh, and I need to get my expectation in the Spirit of God. And I need to get my expectation in the hope of God. I need to get my expectation in what God has declared is true. He has sworn by an oath that he will bring his word to pass. And it's time for me to lift up the word of God. When am I going to lift it up? When I feel the hit, I'm going to lift up the word. I'm going to get the complaint out of my mouth. And I'm going to live as this newly created being he has made me. I am a new creation. Say, I'm a new creation. You have more power than you think you have. But it comes as you're compelled by love. Hallelujah. The old things have passed away. Say, the old is gone. And behold, all things have become new. Say, it's new. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, this is talking about your spirit-to-spirit connection with God. That's the place that you are perfected. You're not perfected in your soul. All you have to do is look at how you thought yesterday about something. You're not connected that way in your soul. You are connected spirit to spirit. He has made your spirit a brand new being. You are a brand new being. But it is time to get the connection of verse 16. Can we back up one verse now? Verse 16 has declared, therefore, from now on, we will regard no one according to the flesh. Can I tell you, part of our problem is, is we've been viewing it after the flesh. And so the devil hits us and we go, oh, no, not again. Oh, my, how is this going to turn out? Can I tell you, it can only turn out to the place that you raise your faith to. It's time for the just to live by faith. We've been called to live by faith. Say, I'm going to live by faith. Hallelujah. Now go to verse 18. Forward. Can we read it together? Say, now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself. How? Through Jesus Christ and has given us. Can I tell you, we are compelled by love and we are ambassadors of reconciliation. We are an ambassador of reconciliation. It's time to tell our fellow believers, be reconciled to the Word of God. I'm going to believe you on the Word of God. I'm not going to join you on your flesh level anymore. I can't live there anymore. I've got to rise up, and I've got to believe the Word for what the Word has declared. It's time to heed the Word of God. Say, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself. Can I tell you who the greatest reconciler is? God the Father. He has reconciled us to himself. How? Through Christ Jesus. And not only that, he is the reconciler, and he said, I give to you. See, this this isn't talking to to the five-fold ministry here. This is talking to the body of Christ. This is talking to me. Say, it's talking to me. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, I don't like this situation right here. How can I speak life to it? I don't want to speak back to it. I don't want to react to it. I want to speak life to it. Can I tell you, Jesus is a life speaker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I surrender to speaking life. He said to love the unlovely. He said do good to the enemy. Can I tell you? It's because of the covenant that we're in. Compelling love. Say compelling love. I surrender to compelling love. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be a minister. I'm going to be an ambassador of reconciliation. See, it's not based on my power. I don't have power to be a minister of reconciliation on my own. Because when they do it to me, you know what I want to do? I want to slap them back. But see, that's after the flesh. But I'm not going to regard that man after the flesh anymore. I cannot afford to regard men after the flesh anymore. It's time to regard them after the Spirit. 
is a candidate that God, Jesus Christ, has died for all. Thus all have died. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, they're a candidate for the blessings of God. What if you have the power to bless them? And has given us the ministry of reconciliation, an ambassador of reconciliation. Next verse. That is, say, that is. It means what I just said, I want to explain it just a little bit further. That is, say, he wants us to know a little more. Yes, he does. And here it comes. That God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. I want you to give thought and pause to this for a few moments. That God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The Father spent the highest commodity of heaven sending Jesus. The world received him with mock, contempt, scorn, shame, falsely accusing him. And I want you to consider this morning, while the world was in the very act of rejecting the Messiah, the Father was in the act of reconciling the world to himself. The greatest atrocity that had ever been hatched is to do away with the Messiah. And in the very moments the men were doing away with the Messiah, the Father's heartbeat was not moving away from them, but He, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Can I tell you, this is a mighty God who when he sets up on his throne and he could be saying, I will destroy them for destroying my son. Instead, mercy is gripping his heart and he's in Christ Jesus reconciling. Say, he's reconciling. <laughs> Can I tell you, I don't know what your circumstances say, but my father is a reconciler. He's got the solution for you. I dare you to believe in the reconciliation power of the Almighty God. He sent His Son so that you might live. The thief is the one that has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus has come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Compelled by love. The Father was compelled by love. But not love for his son, though he did love him. The father was compelled by love for you. The father was compelled by love for you. Not imputing their trespasses to them. And now he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Say, I have a word in me. Word in me. It's reconciliation. reconciliation. It sure is. You need to speak to your circumstances and tell it, no, no, it's time to be reconciled to the Word of God. You might say that I have lack, but the Word says that He has plenty and that He has blessed me with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. I declare the Word over this circumstance. See, we've been asking God to speak to the mountain, but God has commanded us to speak to the mountain. It's time for us to rise up in faith and say, my God is so great. That I believe in his power and everything he said is true. And I'm going to base my decision making on the strength of the word of God. Emotions behind me in Jesus name. Circumstances behind me in Jesus name. 
Thus saith the word of God. I surrender to the word of reconciliation. See, we took it and we narrowed it down to get sinners saved. And, and that's good. We need to get the sinners saved. But can I tell you, the word of reconciliation is for your life today, right now. And it's time for you to get tired of the dictates of the devil. And it's time for you to dictate to the devil the word of God. Say, I believe the word. I'm going to declare the word. Compelled by love. Hallelujah. Well, there's a new way of thinking of things. Lord, let us walk in this new God mindset. Let us walk in the mindset that brings freedom. Hallelujah. Let us bring every thought that subjects itself against the knowledge of God. Let us bring it low. And let us bring those very thoughts into the obedience of Jesus Christ. Because he is the victor. We are not the victim. God is the one. See, God is the one. Do I have any believers in the room? <laughs> Hallelujah. Compelled by love. Amen. Ambassadors of reconciliation. Next verse. Oh, this is a lovely verse. Can we read it together? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Say, this is my calling. You've been wondering what God wants you to do. Well, here it is. Haven't you read the word? Didn't you see this verse? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Hallelujah. I See, it's not just the sinner I need to tell about being an ambassador for Christ. I need to tell the believer, hey, there is an answer. Hallelujah. I need to shout back to the devil, uh -uh, I accept the God answer. I'm not accepting your solution. Hallelujah. I am surrendered. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. It's not something I'm waiting to become. It is something that I am. Say, I am. Well, then let it out. Hallelujah. Put the word in your mouth. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. It's time to make the devil mad. Is, aren't you tired of being mad at the devil? Hallelujah. We'll make him mad at you. Declare the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, as though God were pleading through us, I do feel like the Father is pleading through me. Come on, child of God, believe. Come on, child of God, raise the word of God above that circumstance. Quit complaining to me about the mountain. Speak to it. I'm ready to perform my word, but you need to do what I've called you to do. Say, I surrender, Lord. Christ, the apostle Paul, pleading as, as though God were pleading through us. Who is this God that is pleading? Please come get back in divine order. I want you to walk in victory, child of God. I want you to walk with that victory over the death and hell and the grave. I want you to walk with victory over those very circumstances that you've been crying to me about every night. Can I tell you, it's time to put a praise in your mouth. It's time for you to exalt the one. It's time for you to walk with a reconciling spirit. Yes, to others, but it's time to, to demand your soul to come in line with the Word of God. Bring yourself back into reconciliation with God. Then plead, implore, not just plead. He begins with him pleading, and then he says, we implore you, say, God's imploring me. Are you going to answer the call of God this morning? Yeah. Compelled by the love of God through... Being an ambassador for reconciliation. I am not an ambassador that it's going to get worse. I am not an ambassador that you're going to die. I am an ambassador that you shall live and not die. And you shall declare the works of the Lord. I'm an ambassador to raising the blood-stained banner that has bought my victory and that has bought your victory. Jesus is your victory. Be reconciled to God today. Hallelujah. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Can I tell you, there's nothing that is hindering you from receiving what God has for you, save you. The devil doesn't have the power to do it. 
you have to come surrendered as an ambassador of reconciliation. I believe I can have what God says I can have. I surrender to it. Hallelujah. Because he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Whatever stood in the way between you and God, Jesus erased with the power of the cross. When he shed his blood, when he took the nails in his hands, when he took the beating on his back, when he took the crown of thorns, when the spear came in his side, can I tell you, he faced your lack, he faced your shame, he faced your guilt, he faced the burden of your very soul. His expectation is for the burden to be lifted. Say, I'm an ambassador ambassador. of reconciliation. Reconciliation. Bless the Lord, O my soul. That's where reconciliation begins. Hallelujah. Yeah. Next verse. We are hastening to a finish here today. But I have to challenge you with these little verses right here. Can we read it together? And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal. Can I tell you, it's time for you to walk in your, time for you to stop walking in your carnality. It's time for you to be compelled by love. Because I'm telling you, a believer can walk in their carnality and they will not know the victory that God intends. And the Apostle Paul was proving it here. He said, brethren, I had all kinds of things I wanted to speak to you concerning spiritual things. But because you were wa- acting like carnal is to babes in Christ. Say, I don't want to be a baby in Christ no more. He said, I had to keep feeding you with the milk and not with the solid food. For until now, you were not able to receive it. Some people can't receive from God because they keep walking in their carnality. They keep walking in their fears. They keep walking in the circumstances telling them whether they have victory or not. Can I tell you, if your circumstances are determining whether you have victory or not, you don't have the victory. I don't even care if you've had a good day with your circumstances because that's not true victory. True victory is found in Jesus. I am compelled by the love of God to take a new view. I'm not going to view Christ after the flesh anymore. I'm going to view him a new way. Verse 3, can we read it together? For you are still carnal, for where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I'm of Apollo, and another, I'm of Apollos, are you not carnal? Can I tell you? Their degree was they were arguing who baptized who over what and who said what over what baptism. They said, hey, I'm of Paul. Hey, I'm of Apollos. And hey, I'm of Jesus Christ. And can I tell you, they were missing the point. He said, wait a minute, you're behaving like mere men. Can I tell you this morning? I got any believers in the room? You are not mere men. Can I tell you, you're not just a mere lady. Can I tell you, you are a newly created being in Christ Jesus. And it's time to get your behavior to come in line with who you are in Christ. It's time to rise up in faith. Say, I'm going to rise up in faith. I can have what God says I can have. I've got the victory. That's what Jesus gave me. It is what he gave you. Because he's, he's the conqueror, but he made you more than the conqueror. No longer mere men. Now I'm an ambassador of reconciliation. Final passage today. Psalms 133. What a powerful word. If the father has a heartbeat, if the father has a desire, if the father is longing to go in a direction, as a newly created being, I get excited and I start walking that way. But as one who is in the flesh and in the mully grubs, because I don't like what's going on, I begin to drag my feet. And the Holy Spirit, he's pulling me, but I'm... I'm resisting. 
I don't want to be a resistor. I want to get in unity. Can I tell you, that's what Psalms 133 is about. It's one of my favorite psalms. A song of accent of David. Can we read it together, with the, starting with the word behold? Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mm. Say, it's sweet. Unity. When the uniting factor is how great God the Father is. That is the united factor in the body of Christ. It is the united factor. The united factors, can I tell you, it's time for you to cease being so hung up in your Republican views. And it's time for you to quit being so hung up in your Democratic views. It's time for you to quit being so hung up in your independent views. And it's time to get hung up in what the Father has declared. It is time to be compelled by the loving factor that Jesus died for all. Thus, I know all are a candidate for the ministry of reconciliation. How good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Verse 2, can we read it together? It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edges of his garment. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. Hallelujah. Say, I want life forevermore. It's the commanded blessing. But only to those who have accepted the challenge, loving, compelling you to be an ambassador of reconciliation. 